Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, welcome to our coffee break. And look who we were able to snag for a few minutes <laughs> in light of how close we are to the official election day. Thanks for being here, Connor. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is, you love this, Mr. The, government. This is the <laughs> Friday <laughs> Eve before the election. And we're busy as ever, You're not even with just election prep. It's I mean, early, early, early voting, voting well. ended this morning. It's this afternoon. Yep, so it ends at, a, it, it ended it will end at, by the time this taping is out at uh, 2 o'clock on Friday, November 2nd. Yeah. yeah. I know so. you, and I know you told me last week, the first week, we had about 950 early voters. Uh, yeah, we had, we had just about, in the first week, we had just over 1,000 as of oh, Saturday. Wow. wow. Seriously. So what, that's more than, we, what do we normally so, get in a, in a midterm, broadly well, so, speaking? So for early voting, this is only the second time we've ever done it. Uh, this yeah. is the first midterm election we've ever done it on. Okay. So it's still going to take some time to really crunch the numbers. It'll probably be after the election that I'll have more info on uh, on the effect of early voting as opposed to previous elections. Sure. But I early voted. Yeah. yeah real. I, I early voted as well. <laughs> I early vote when we're done here. Uh, we'll get finished what you're saying. Yeah, so it, this really it's, uh, it, it's a great way for people to be able to kind of vote on their own their own timetable. But right now, we still don't really know what the effect will be on this election. And of course, as we know, this, uh, this election has a lot of popularity right now. There's a lot of people who are interested in voting regardless of if they have the ability to vote early or vote on election day. day. There's a lot of people who have interest in this election right now. And the now. questions have impact on this election. Exactly. Right. The questions are amazing. The, um, I mean, I know when I went in, there was only like two or three people there, in and out, easy. It's a lot of work for you to staff this for two weeks. Yes, it definitely takes a, it, it definitely extends the range of early voting and voting prep uh, by a few weeks. So uh, yeah, fall disappeared before I knew it. But it, it's been working smoothly so far. I've heard a lot of people mm -hmm. saying how convenient it's been for them and how much they have loved it so far. So it's been wonderful. That's great. And I think like um, the, those like, I voted stickers, and um, you started that hashtag, Hoffington Votes, have become popular where I keep seeing them popping up on like social media feeds. Yeah. People are like, look at me, oh, look at me. <laughs> well, and, and there's a little competition going on. Yep, I have heard. I, I know that it's, uh, it's really just, from what I've heard, really bragging rights to go for it, but uh, Ashland, Holliston, and Hopkinton are all betting on who will have the higher percent turnout <laughs> just for the total election. And, this is kind of a, we're, we're getting to brag before the election by how high our numbers are. Our, our early voting turnout, <laughs> but no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but if you haven't voted, make certain you vote on Tuesday. And the, uh, because we want to rock the competition. And so as of last night, when I had my numbers all sorted out, we had 1,992 people who voted early. Wow. And that doesn't include absentees. It doesn't remember include absentees. We have over 300 absentees that have uh, applied, and most have come back at this point. And there wow. are still some that have to come in. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that's exciting. That is exciting because that's as high as some other election turnouts. Or higher. Yeah. I mean, we've that's had, real, you know, that seems like way higher than taking in the, the Taking in those, uh, those numbers for absentees, that puts us pretty much at what, higher than we got for most primaries. So. Well, and, 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 <laughs> well, yeah. So when that's you, amazing. Yeah, that's so on election day, and we say, oh, okay, this is voter turnout, I know that that's the same time as that you're also, you, you have to upload all those absentees. That's when you actually input all these early voting yep. so that somehow I hope that we're able to distinguish, like, this percentage voted on election day, these were absentees, and these were, you know, early, so that we can weigh it out and see. And yeah, and so I did that to try to figure out what the effect of early voting was on its first run in the presidential election, as I looked at how many people voted early, how many people voted absentee, and how many went to the polls on election day, yeah. to kind of see where, what early voting affected by throwing that into the mix. Like, well, I voted early, but like my husband and um, daughter are very, like, I want to do it on election day. It still means something to go on election day. So I that's think it's a mix, too. and I think it's yeah. a mix of what you know people are comfortable with, and that's what this whole purpose is. Well, what early voting takes away 
is the I didn't have time excuse. Right. I it, couldn't do it, it on that day. It yeah. removes that barrier of you've now had two weeks to find the time mm -hmm. to make arrangements. So you, the, the excuse of I didn't have time, oh, you know. Well, sure, absolutely. It really removes that. I know and, it's yeah. a lot of work, but in a way, just given, and maybe it's just because of what's going on in the world that everyone's so um, focused on this. But in the future, it, it would be wonderful if we had more of a, you know, window of time to vote versus the one day. And you know, I, election correct me if day. I'm wrong, but I do think I saw somewhere, not all states do this, but I believe we're one of the few states that actually gives up to a certain amount of time paid for people to go vote by employers. It, it's, oh, it's, I, I think it's a so, state yeah. law. Yeah. So that you don't have that excuse. Right. Oh, my, I can't take the time off. You know, I can't yeah. afford the time. I can't, you know. Right. The, um, people coming out, I mean, it, it's still neat to see this, the same friendly faces back there, Len and Punky and all that. <laughs> um, are they enjoying being there? Uh, during this, or some of the, some of them find it so it's exhausting for one. Right. I mean, but election day is as well. Uh, but they still find it so, I think, heartening that you, yeah. there, there's so many people who are coming in and uh, and people have been very grateful for it, which is nice as well. And it's really great for them to hear when they're working really hard down there and uh, and people come up and say really appreciate all that you guys are doing. And so yeah. make sure everyone thanks their election workers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know that it is. Definitely, um, I don't want to say thankless job, but it's a hard job. Yeah. Okay. Um, so here's an odd question. Is there any chance that something like this could happen on local election levels? I think it's, uh, it's possible. I mean, I think more research needs to be done into whether it actually affects turnout. or if, Because in 16, what I saw is more that it, it shifted where people were voting. Uh, I saw that... In 2016, there were far fewer uh, absentees than there were in 2012, but there were far more. Uh, it kind of really? balanced out yeah. the early voting. And we actually saw a larger amount of people who voted, but a smaller percentage because our population had gone up. So, and how it, many registered voters do we have now? We now have 12,140. Wow. So, I, I guess the hard thing is you don't have enough. Um, real data after this one to be able to make a decision. You need a couple of years of this to Most be able to, likely. you know, and, and as you said, this election seems to have a lot of people excited, so hopefully voter turnout was going to be high anyway. Right. But I still love the fact that you have the early um, voting going on. Yeah. Now, is that happening in every town across the state? Every town across the state has it, and the requirement for early voting hours is during office hours, during the regular business hours of the clerk or election commissioner's office. I mean, you opened on Saturday, which was and a big yes. deal. And so there was, um, there was the option to open for weekend days or additional evening hours. We could expand our hours. Uh, we already do have some evening hours on Tuesdays, mm -hmm. so I was, mm -hmm. I was confident that would get some people in the week. Okay. But I wanted to also give the chance for people so who were just really busy during the week to come in on Saturday, and I kind of placed it in the middle of the day so I... Wouldn't hit yeah. anyone going to practice in the morning. No, we go to their <laughs> evening plans yet. <laughs> but that, you know, so th I, I was going to also give say you credit there. Absolutely, but you've been doing some a lot of get out the vote yeah. work in general. Like you've been at the high, high school. school. And yes. Talk a little bit about some of the things you've done even prior to this or whatever to get. So I've I've done a few voter registration drives at the high school mm -hmm. uh, before I before everyone graduated just last year. Yeah. I, I made sure that. When I went for a drive, it's like, okay, everyone take the application, and then here's the absentee ballot application, too, for all of you who are going off to school, because that's the, the thing is that there's a lot yeah. of people who don't think about that, so I'm like, hold on to it. If you lose it, then get it right off the Secretary of State's website, and you'll be mm -hmm. good to go. Good. Uh, that's great. And then I've also been working with, there's a fantastic Girl Scout who's working on her gold award. I want to shout out. Shout out to Juliana, who has been really helping me out with making sure that we get everyone in our high school registered and pre-registered who's eligible. Wow. Well, so I haven't been able to check the numbers yet because I haven't had time, but I promised her I'd tell her how much of an impact she ended up making already. So uh, I know she, she's been doing a hard, a really good job over there and a lot of hard work has gone into it. I love this. That's I wonderful. love this. This is like brings tears to my eyes. <laughs> well, there, there's a, I've said this before on the show. 
Um, voter turnout has some statistics behind it. And the youth do not turn out in the numbers. And then when the youth hit their 20s, more men than women turn out. And then the women, as they start to have children, tend to start to turn out. And as you get older, the turnout goes up. And so I don't know if there's a way to slice through the demographics, but boy, it would be wonderful mm -hmm. to see that we had a really big youth vote turnout. And that's and important just because of the fact that they're, we're voting on the future, and they are they the are future. They are the future. Exactly. <laughs> You know, and, 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 and I mean, and I think some of those past sta stats we are seeing in this election, actually the trending changing. Yeah. I, I, I'm so hopeful that we get a more engaged populace and that this well, is just the role a models around trick the country. pony that it right. keeps happening. Right. We I see hope the role so models too. And, and young people are so engaged. Um, you know, we see that everywhere. And, and so it's just really exciting. But I think we're also seeing it within our own community. <laughs> someone like Juliana, someone like, you know, um, Devin Rodder and things like that, right, making right. sure kids are getting registered, getting that, has, has put this thing that, like, I know um, a girl that's a, a senior at UMass Amherst, she thought she was set for absentee. She wasn't. She drove home last Saturday just to vote. And right. it was the first time she'd ever <laughs> voted. But and no, she could have voted, like, the three years prior. Times seem yeah. feel so different. I mean, certainly social media. But young people are very much more aware of the issues in the country. Maybe not down, you know, or they have perceptions, mm -hmm. you know. Like, I, I can imagine, you know, at our age, or, or, you know, when I was their age, or generations ago, and not even that far back, before all that information, you know, you could just go about your little teenage life without barely knowing this broad stuff because, you know, you were in your lane with, as a kid. But here, I mean, kids still are focused on their young stuff. But I think the information seeps, and, and they're not... I think it would be, I think that's certainly why we're seeing yeah. more interest broadly. I well, I, I think that we've seen a real burst of interest on social media, which has been, it, I mean, anyone who's in marketing now knows that the best way to reach, especially a younger audience, Millennium. is through social media. Yep. Yep. And so it, it's the pickup that we've seen there has gotten a lot more of the information yes. and out there. and and. One of the things that, you know, some people will say social media can make it feel like we're not actually talking with each other anymore, but it does bring everyone from around the country a little right. bit closer together in yeah. a sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's and a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged <laughs> sword. What we, what we feel is there are people who have, that have an issue affecting them uh, nationwide, potentially, or even just in their state, and they now have a connection with someone in a different state who's willing to speak up for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. absolutely. And that's a change that we... We haven't seen this before. This it's is really the generational shift. Well, I mean, you're yeah. in the millennial. In the, millennial. <laughs> yeah. So you, this is what's great because you relate to that. You understand the, the mindset, you know, and um, you know, serve that in terms of you know, in your leadership role here in town, engaging young people in the levers and the systems that we have to you know be heard. But I think. And that, I mean, there's no hiding the fact that I'm rather political at times, but no. The, but, but, so we won't be. <laughs> but because yeah. of social media and kind of the engagement that's going on, it's it's had me get actually involved in campaigns that aren't even in our state. So writing postcards for a candidate that might be in Texas, or right. in, and making phone calls for a candidate in Georgia and stuff like that, it has actually made you feel like you were bonded bigger than your own backyard. Absolutely, yeah. and people are doing that across the country, connecting. Right joining groups and so, so forth. Well, and it's good because we should feel like everyone who lives in our country is our neighbor. They're, they're, yeah, they, you know, yeah. they're our countrymen. We right. should be working with them to make a better future for America in general. Yep. I agree. Absolutely. I agree. So I was going to, yeah. oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to switch just to, uh, you know, a, a fun topic. Or so you want to give another go, thing? Yeah. I wanted you to talk a little bit about, uh, so Not that the fun. election day. <laughs> okay. And just the process of the, the back behind the scenes. You guys get there at O oh, Dark 30. <laughs> you know, what, I mean, talk about the, I, I don't know that everybody understands. What goes the, into it? When you start and when you end and what that means and then how you, you know, report results and all that good stuff. Because so, those are things that I don't In think. about a minute and a half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we do, we do all of our setup the day before. Okay. We set up the entire election hall. Uh, then the next day, I usually get in. At, I get into the town hall at about between four and four thirty in the morning. 
to collect all the supplies that I need that had to stay behind. Yeah. Uh, I run to Dunkin' Donuts and grab some donuts and a box of Joe for the Everybody. morning team to come in and uh -huh. have stuff right away. Uh, I get we get all get there between five and five thirty for the state election because we actually o open earlier. Okay. Um, so we're going to be opening at six thirty. So we spend, really yeah. So wow. instead of seven, we're opening at six thirty. Okay. Um, so we then get in. We do all the last minute setup stuff that you couldn't do the night before, and get the machines running as of six. So print those zero tapes. Yeah, I was just going to yep. say you have prove to do that the, the prove that nothing has nothing gone through those. Anyone okay. who's observing at that time can look and make sure that all the boxes are empty. Then print the zeros, lock them up, and we're ready to start. So when and, do you and before feed? that, I'm just going to roll back one second. Before that, something that happened last week that um, I've gotten to observe and other people get to observe is they actually test these machines before that, before they can even set them up, and observers are brought in to watch all this testing wow. and yeah. test them first. Test them first, and then they, and I'll, I'll be proud. Ken Weissman until like what a few years ago found a glitch. I, I not when I was there. I know yeah. that. No, much, no, no, no. I, I don't remember <laughs> that. That would have terrified me. <laughs> uh, yeah. But no, but no. Yeah. The, you know, it, it does. So it's important that that happens. It's important that the start of the day, all the machines are tested and zeroed out. When do the absentee ballots and the early voting ballots get put through? So we have it. That's throughout the day after the polls open until all of them have been fed through. Okay. And so we have so a that's team that's going to be dedicated that all day, all they're going to be doing is early ballots and absentee ballots. They go check them in, they check them out, open them, put it through. So when it comes to the data collection information, do you have data, like, you know, demographics of age and all that on the early ballots, even though you're feeding them through all day long, you know that not only physical numbers, but you could actually stratify. I can actually. I, I haven't tried to do that one yet, but I yeah. actually can crunch numbers like that as well with the data that yeah. I have. Yeah. I mean, I, I, down the road, <laughs> yeah. in June, when you're breathing a little bit, or whenever it gets quiet in the clerk's office. It's, it's I don't never know quiet never in the clerk's can. office. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, the June's a bad time, too. <laughs> and, OK, so, you, so your day gets started. And the websites the that we use in yeah. the different political parties, um, we actually crunch that data. Oh, so we actually know how many millennials vote, how many Gen X. I'm talking about how many were early oh, and millennials. Which, which, yeah. yeah, we can get data for early voting too. I haven't, I, that's one report I haven't tried to yeah. compile yet, but. Yeah. Uh, so the rest of the day, the how's it going? and dicing just sounds like a lot of analytical fun. <laughs> yes. You know, by street, by this, by so, that. I mean. So what we end up doing is then, you know, whole day we're making sure that the whole process runs smoothly. Everyone's getting their votes in. People who are inactive are being reactivated so they can keep voting. Uh, and then, you know, continually, especially with all the folded ballots that we get from early voting, one of the things we have to make sure of is the machine jams. Because the machines, in 2016, the machines were constantly jamming when we were feeding them through. Every 15 minutes of feeding, it would jam. Couldn't we handle to, the folded ballots. Yeah. I think it's neat to know, too, is like when they're feeding these ballots into these, um, in the machines on election day that are either early voting or like absentee, they're actually being fed into the, the these people's Precinct. actual precincts. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So like they'll look up and say, oh, Darlene's in precinct three, and they'll go into that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you're doing that all day long, and then polls close at eight. And if there's still ballots to early ballots that need to be run, then they There'd still be. need to be run through until we have them all done. So how we late will your night be, if you, I mean, on average, or what do you anticipate? Well, so in, I, I, we had more early voters in 2016. Mm -hmm. In 2016, I probably got home to see what the results of the election were nationwide at 2 in the morning. <gasps> wow. um, but uh, typically, we finish up, uh, I expect us to probably finish up by uh, 10 to 11, and then after that, we'll transport all of the ballots in sealed cases back to be stored in the vault, and they'll be kept there for quite a long time. And then I'll go ahead and send my reports out first of unofficial numbers to the Associated Press to let them know so that they can start reporting on that. Our man in and, and then <laughs> I'll send it out to, then it, it takes a while for us to make sure everything has been certified and uh, 
check provisional voters. So that takes an additional couple of days to a few weeks. So you're looking at an 18 plus hour day. Yes. That day. <laughs> just say. No. Yeah. Um, an 18 plus hour day. And have you ever had where it's 8 o'clock? And I don't think we've had like lines out the door, but somebody coming in at 801 saying, can I still vote? Or, you know, what, how? Is there a firm close on, on so the time? The way that it works is if you are in line at 8 o'clock, then that's when we establish end of line. Got mm -hmm. it. And an officer or a warden or somebody stands there and marks, sorry, this is the end of line. If anyone else comes up afterwards, they have to be turned away. Yeah. Gotcha. But everyone who made it at 8 o'clock has to the, the right to vote. Yeah. Oh. Wow. So Remember, so, you're turning back your clocks this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, get did, that wrong. we turned back the clocks in the election machine during the test. <laughs> <laughs> I know Amy Groves went, and she said it was actually kind of fun to watch and everything. Yeah, yeah it's one of those things we only do every few years for when we have November elections. So. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, I know it's different, like in May, for a local election, you know, the results come in, you're able to tap them up on the wall, let different individuals know, announce the winners, and it's done. When it's a state election, also you have to report these to the Secretary of State's office, yep. things like that. And I know, like you said, like there's all these things that can happen after that. But I know, like at eight thirty, I'm watching that ticker, and I'll say this many percentages. How are they getting these percentages? So there's plenty of different outlets that like to report on the numbers, and uh, what they'll do is they will, if you don't call them, they will call you and they will ask you what the, what the numbers are. Uh, and I'm always more than happy to call them the moment I have the numbers for it. And that's mm -hmm. why they'll always have like X number of precincts reporting. Oh, okay. Because those are the precincts that have already called in and said that this is what the, this is what our total was, this, and here's what happened for each race. So do, do you get preliminary numbers? Like, like at four in the afternoon, could you have a count of how people have voted, or how does that work? So the only time that we can know how people have voted, or how, which direction they voted in, essentially, is I'm once married. that receipt prints at the end of the night. Got it. Uh, during the day, all we get is how many ballots have gone into Got each it. machine. Got so, it. And we do hourly counts yeah. to show. Yeah, no, and I see yeah. there's a counter there on each machine, yep. so you can see how many voted in each precinct. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, you know, the, the competition being as fierce as it may be in terms of the election in general, um, I look forward, and I appreciate the thoroughness Yes. and the thoughtfulness and whatever time it takes to be as thorough as you need to be. I mean, you know. I, when I hear about stuff going on in other states, yeah, you know, I look here and go, oh my goodness, We're we have lucky. such an incredible voting process and I feel like nobody, you know, nobody in this town needs That's to be worry. concerned yeah. about their right to vote. Absolutely. And I would say the same thing statewide. Yeah. Ah, yes. there's, mm -hmm. I've met a lot of clerks from across the state and they're all extremely dedicated to their craft and they want to make sure that people get out and are, have their voice heard on election day. Yeah, there's Absolutely. no shenanigans. Well, on that note, the, the, I think this was just, what are you yeah, doing for ahead. fun for crying out loud? Isn't it? I, mean, I know you don't have a lot of time right now. Fun? What? <laughs> What's that word? <laughs> did you dress up for Halloween? Uh, I, I did a bit. I, I last minute did because I had uh, I had people in the office asking, oh, well, we want to dress up. Or, Connor, are you dressing up? And I'm like, oh, geez, I need to throw something together. This is the day before. <laughs> right, uh, right. <laughs> so I put together a, um, a last minute kind of outfit of, uh, I had this 1920s party that I went to a few. Oh, cool. uh, back oh in I the remember summer. that. Was yeah, and okay. So I threw that outfit together. And so I had the, uh, the straw hat and the. Oh, isn't that the Misslewood event? Did you have uh, a monocle? No, I didn't have a monocle. Ah. Uh, but I did have, I have the pocket watch with the chain reaching oh, through the oh, waistcoat. Had, I hope so. somebody took a picture. I'd love to there, see that. Yeah, there was a picture taken. I, I need to check and see. I think it was tweeted out on, or sent out by the Hopkinton Facebook page. Oh, okay. and great. Twitter. And, great. Uh, and they oh. put it out with the all the folks in town hall who were dressed up for Halloween out in yeah. front by the... Uh, the vote here sign so that people also got a reminder to come on down and vote. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. So do we have any shout outs before we um, have to go? HCA Gala. <laughs> HCA Gala tomorrow night. I mean, I think um, vote on Tuesday is a big no. one coming up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a veterans, uh, veterans celebration coming up next week. But um, uh, the Hoppington um, 
um, Country Club Foundations Gala is coming up also. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow night is definitely the HCA Gala. That'll They're be a lot still of fun. selling yeah. tickets up until like the time the gala starts. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, you can get them at the door. Check it out. And Ooh, um, wonderful open um, bars, and really yeah. neat things. Um, Great music involved. Um, a local band that um, is getting pretty well known. JPs is playing, mm -hmm. and then um, yeah, they're a good band. Well, I'd be going there. I'd, I'd go be to remiss to not to not say today happens oh, to yes. also be Me, Darlene's birthday. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Let's happy take birthday. it. Let's, let's, let's <laughs> take it out with a happy birthday to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Join us, Connor. Happy birthday <laughs> to <laughs> you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, Darlene. Happy birthday to you. Yay. And Love many to more. Happy birthday. Love Love to say. Say. Love Love Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Together, we can change the news. Find out how at safekids.org. Mother hasn't paid the bills in months. My parents try to keep their financial mistakes hidden from me. Mom paid the bills, but mailed them to the wrong place again. Dad couldn't figure out the tip for the pizza delivery. Have you noticed a decline in your aging parents or loved ones when it comes to money or financial decisions? As we age, our ability to make good financial choices decreases. Starting a conversation about this with a loved one or parent can often be hard. I know my mom is having difficulty, but how can I help her? SmartAboutMoney.org offers tools and self-directed courses for starting the conversation and planning for the future. Smart About Money is committed to educating Americans on financial topics and empowering them to make positive and sound decisions with their finances. For help with family financial planning, visit the free money experts at smartaboutmoney.org, a non-commercial organization focused on your financial success. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkey see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers' surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving, because if you do it, your child will too.